Good morning. Good Wednesday morning. Thank God for you. Thank you for tuning in to Speak the Word broadcast. I am Prophetess Jacqueline Price. I am so excited to be with you this beautiful morning. Amen. Thank God for you. I thank him so much for you joining me this morning. Amen. I love y'all so much. And I, I really do appreciate you for being a part of the broadcast this morning. I, I'm back and I just, you know, I really thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. I love you very much. Uh, look like, hallelujah. Praise God. Stuff's happening this morning. Praise God for each and every one of you. Again, thank you for tuning in. You know what? I am excited about Abba. I'm excited about what the King has for each and every one of us. You hear me say that all the time, but I really am happy about what the King has for you. Amen. I'm happy that he has plans for you and you can be encouraged by that. You can be uplifted by that this morning that Abba has plans for you. Hallelujah. Thank God he has plans. All you got to do is just say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to trust you. You got plans. I'm, I'm, I'm going to believe that that he has plans. I'm going to stand on that, that he has plans. I'm going to rest in that, that he has plans. I'm going to rely on him. Good morning, that he has plans for me. That's all you need to know is King has plans for you. Amen. And I want to also thank everyone for your prayers and, and, and prayers and just encouraging prayers and, you know, that you've been doing to, uh, help our family, encourage my husband lost his brother. So thank God for all of you praying for us. I really do appreciate it. I really do. And while I'm, I want to give a quick shout out to my youngest daughter. She is her birthday today. So I'm not going to tell her age, but I'm so happy. And we, I give a shout out to you. Happy birthday, Alexis. You know, I love you. And today you guys, I'm just, I was writing things down this morning. Turn it over. Turn it over. Turn it over. It's all going to work out. Turn it over. Turn everything that the, that's bothering you over. Everything that is frustrating you. Turn it over. It's all going to work out. It's going to work out. I know you. You say, when, how, I don't know, I've been waiting, I've been waiting. Turn it over. Turn it over. Come on. Just, here you go. There you go, Father. There you go, Jesus. Here you are, Holy Spirit. Three and one, here you go. Turn it over. And when we turn it over to the king, he is going to work it out. As a matter of fact, he's already worked it out. We're the ones sweating and wind and biting nails and, and what, what toenails, fingernails. We're just chewing down everything because we are so overwhelmed by it. Turn it over. I'm going to be in 1 Peter. Let's start there. Let's start in 1 Peter. And this is Peter encouraging the people of God. And he, he starts out. He's just talking to them. And in that seven verse, he says, turn it over. He says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Casting all your cares upon who? On the king. The amplified version says, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, on him, for he cares for you. For your cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Look at that. He cares about you affectionately and watchfully. So our job is just to turn it over to him. Amen. We got to stop worrying. Work, you know, I was telling him, you know, you got this. You got this. You got everything that we are concerned about. Abba has it. He has it. As a matter of fact, let's go. To, I'm going to go to Psalms 22. Psalms actually 55, verse number 22. Psalms 55, verse number 22. Look at what it says. 
cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Wow. Look at that. Good morning, Pastor. Look at that. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. Psalms 55 and 22. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Wow. The Amplified Version of the same thing says, cast your burdens on the Lord, releasing the weight of it. Oh, look at that. Come on now, Abba. Releasing the weight of it. You guys, look at this. You got to let go. Cast these things on the king. Cast your concerns. Cast your cares. Cast your burdens. Release the weight of it. Why? Because the Father's letting you know it's going to, it's weighing you down. So because it's weighing you down, you got to give it to him. Come on. He's going to sustain you. He's going to help you. He's going to keep you. But if you are not willing to throw it to him, throw it to him. Remember what Jesus told the disciples when they had fished all night. I'm like, we, these are professional uh, fishermen and they fished, fished all night and they didn't catch anything. Remember? What did Jesus tell them to do? Cast. Cast your net where? To the other side. Father God is telling you, casting means to throw it out. Throw it. I'm throwing it. I'm releasing it. So when the Bible tells us in Psalms 55 and 22 to release the weight, releasing the weight of the thing. I got to release the weight of the problem. I, oh, come on, oh, come on up in here. Come on, come on. You got to release it. I got to let it go. See, sometimes we think by holding on to that care, that we are going to be trying to, we're going to, we're going to help God out. I got to help God out in this. I got to help God out in that. No, all Abba wants you to do is let it go. Now, I want to show you something else. Let's go to John, John, the 14th chapter, the first verse, John chapter 14. I want to get, get there. John 14. Let me jump there. I like to have my Bible in hand, you know. I know we got every everything, phones, everything. I like the word in my hand, and I'm not, not knocking anybody who does not, you know, who prefer the phone. That's good. John 14 and 1, look at this. And this is Jesus talking in John 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. Look what he says. In my father's house, I'm going to the second verse, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus is telling the disciples because he's been talking to them about me leaving and all that kind of stuff. But he's telling them, don't let your heart be troubled. I know we love to use this during the time of people passing and all of that. But no, Jesus is telling them, do not let your heart be troubled or distressed. Agitated. The enemy wants you to get overwhelmed, distressed, agitated. He doesn't want you to release the weight. He wants you to be burdened down with that care. He doesn't want you to turn it over. Not He doesn't want you to let it go because if you ever keep, if you ever release it, that's why Psalms 55 and 22 said, releasing the weight. Release it. It's all going to work out. It's all going to work out. It's going to work out when you let it go. It can't, it can't work out when you holding it. But you don't know. I, I just want to. And then you start doing all this vacillating back and forth. I just want to know about this. And, and you want to start asking people in their question after question. Father God just wants you to let it go. All these questions, and I, I, I just, I'm seeking this. If you would let it go and just trust the king. See, that's, come on, people. Really? But you don't know how long because you haven't let it go. That's how long. 
All right, let me go to Romans. Romans 8 and uh, 28. We know that one. Romans 8 and 28. Oh, come on. Let me. I want to read it for you. I want to read it for you. Romans 8 and 28. Here we go. I love it. I love it. And we know all things work together for the good of them, good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Come on. To the called. It's going to work out, y'all. It's going to work out. Look at this. And we know. Do you know? Do you really know? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I love what, how he's pointing this out. To them. Somebody needs to say, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm them. I'm one of them. Under them, it's working out for it. It's going, I, I, I know, I know, you got to know. And we know it's going to work out. And we know it's going to be okay. And we know I got to release it. That's what I know. Psalms 55 and 22, I got to release it. Amen. It is going to work but see, mm -mm. when you have already factored in you, talk to me, King. I, I know it's been a minute, but when you've already, when you've factored in you, see, you're not, you, you, you're not letting it go. You're, you're, you're manipulating it. Come, well, King, you better say a word up in here. He talking to me this morning. When you're manipulating it, see, you're not letting it go, but you're trying to manipulate it to make it work your way and not let it work the King's way. Oh, come on up in here. Yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. See, King don't want you to be trying, and see, we think we can do that with King. We think that we can manipulate the King to make it work for our good. No, mm -mm. you just finna dig a hole for you. You're just finna get in trouble with the King. And we know. And we know. So don't try to manipulate, try to manipulate the situation and manipulate the thing. Just trust the king by releasing it and letting it go, putting it in his hands and saying, here you are. This is yours. This is yours. Come on. But, you know, what if it don't, what if it don't happen like that? What, what if this happened? See, you're so busy in your mind. That's why the Bible tells us in, what, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, you got to cast down your own personal reasoning. You have, see, y'all listen to me. Listen to me. Thank you for inviting others in. Listen to me. You have to let go and cast down your reasoning. Could it be it's because you want to keep reasoning it instead of trusting the king with it? Stop trying to run away from something the father said I'm not letting you out of. Oh, come on. Stop trying to run away from something the king says I have positioned you for a reason. Cast it on me. Cast the concern. Cast the wind. Cast all of these. Give all of that to me and you're going to be okay. Amen. You're going to, it's going to work out. Let me go back to the word. I'm in a teaching mood this morning. Hallelujah. Let me go back to the word. Hallelujah. You go, King. Now let's go back to first Peter. Looking at verse number seven, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. That careth means he keeps on. And that's where we get to this part where he says, it says he cares for you in the amplified version affectionately. And cares about you watchfully. Look at that. You have a father who cares so much for you. Affectionately. Oh, I just, come on, hug. Okay, I received that hug. Affectionately, that he's going to love on you. He's going to care. For, he's going to watch over you. He's going to make sure everything is okay for you. It's going to be okay, but you got to know in your knower that he's got me. I got to go deeper in this. Come on, I got to go deeper in this. And look what the eighth verse says. Why is he telling us to cast Paul, I mean, Peter is saying to cast all these cares on, on the king. He says he has a reason for saying it. Look at that eighth verse. 
He says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The Amplified Version, I love that part. It says, be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant, and cautious at all times. So the king is telling you through Peter, cast this stuff on me, cast your care on me, because if you, I want you to cast it on me because I'm being affectionately concerned about you. I'm watching over you. I'm caring for you in such a loving way because I want you to know that you have an adversary. Amen. He's seeking a way to jack you up. I don't know why I like to use that word so often, but anyway, I like it. He's seeking a way to, to mess you up. He's seeking a way to devour you, and he can use you if you're not careful to devour, to devour you. Why? Because you're so, don't get so twisted. See, the enemy wants to twist you up and get you thinking some crazy thoughts and stuff. Come on up in here. That eighth verse tells us, Satan is looking for a way to devour you. Do you not know that? The enemy wants traps and schemes and stuff to set you up. And many times, if you're not careful, you'll find yourself like, wow. Look at this word. Why? We have an adversary that does not like us, okay? The devil hates you. He don't like you. He don't care nothing about you. He wants you dead and gone. He said, because you bear the image, you wear the mark and, and branding of the king. He don't like you. He realizes that you've been placed on this planet for a purpose. So he wants to warp your thinking, make you think that the king is not for you, make you think that the king is not going to ever come through for you so that you can walk away from the king. Hear me this morning. That's what he wants. He wants you to get so caught up in, in this care that you're so misdirected. You better hear this woman. You're so misdirected that you're going after something the king says, why are you, where are you going? Adam, where are thou? Where are you headed? Don't get misdirected by uh, the concerns and cares of this life. Turn it over. It's all going to work out. You've got to turn that thing over because if you don't, the enemy's going to misdirect you because you're so wrapped up in the thing. And the father says, get out of being wrapped up in that thing and get wrapped up in me and I'm going to work the thing out for you. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. And we know, Romans 8 and 28, that all things are going to work together for the good of them that love him and that are called according to his purpose. And we know all things will work. It's going to work out. Do not get bogged down, you guys, in the cares of this life. Do not get bogged down with the worries and situation. Yes, things come. Disappointments happen. Hold on to what the word of the Lord is saying to you. And see, many times people don't stay in the word. I got to go a little deeper here. So look at this. Eight, back to the 8th verse of 1 Peter chapter 5. It says, be well balanced. I want to read it from the Amplified Version right now. Tempered, sober-minded. Ooh, ain't nothing like a person that's not. Have you ever seen somebody that is who has drank too much? They're drunk. I mean, they just, they on full for real. And they're just staggering and, and don't know and, and starts talking all kind of stuff out, the, out their mouth and saying all kind of crazy things. And, and you're like, you don't usually do this. What's going on? They're not sober. They're not sober. So when the king is telling you in that eighth verse of 1 Peter 5, 
Be sober-minded. What is he saying? Don't be drunk. Be stable in your thinking. Don't be messed up in your thinking process. Okay? Be vigilant and cautious. Why? He says, at all times, for the that, look at this, I love the Amplify. It says, for that enemy of yours, the devil. Oh, you thought it was somebody else, didn't you? You thought it was the co-worker. You thought it was this person. You thought it was the ex-husband. You thought it was this. You thought, you thought, you thought, you thought. You thought it was somebody trying to, you thought it was an old friend. No, uh-uh. Look what the word of the Lord says. You have an enemy. You have an enemy. For that enemy of yours, the devil, don't like you. He roams around like a lion in fierce hunger. He's, he's so hungry to tear you up. He's so hungry to mess you up. Why I got to be sober in mind? Because if I'm not sober in mind, the enemy wants a way to influence me. That's why we have these all these influencers. He wants to influence me and make me think that the king is not going to come through for me. Yes. He wants you to think that Abba is not going to come through for you. So I tell God, you know, I, I have to make sure the king was talking to me this morning. So the enemy wants to make you think that, oh, so don't pay your tithes. Don't give an offering. I was kind of backing away from that, but the king is bringing me right back to this money issue here. He, don't, he, he doesn't want you to be sober in your mind. So the devil's going to tell you, look, see, you're putting all that money in church and I don't know why you're doing all that. See, ain't, this ain't happening. That's not happening. Don't listen. Especially when you're dealing with money issues. Here, you better hear me. When you're dealing with money issues, the enemy doesn't want you to give the king his money. Because if you give the king, see, you don't, he doesn't want you to give the king his money. Because the word says, says in Malachi 3.10, he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. If he will pour you out, open up the windows. Woo, have you ever seen a window just fly open? Open up the windows and what? Pour you out. The enemy doesn't want you to be caught up in giving because he don't want you to have a pour out. Hallelujah. He doesn't want the king to pour out on you. Amen. So look at this. He's going to fight you in every way. Look what the word of the Lord says here. Your enemy. You have an enemy. And that enemy's job is to keep you. He's so hungry, it says, and feels hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. The battle is truly in the mind. So if the enemy can get you caught up in thinking crazy thoughts and crazy things, that's all he wants. Now let's go to verse number nine. Look what the Bible says. Peter's talking. He tells us what? What to do? Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Okay, so here Peter is talking about, hey, we've all endured. We had brothers who endured suffering, brothers who've endured attack, brothers who've endured. They've all endured. The Amplified Version says, withstanding him, be firm in faith against his own set, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined. That's what we're supposed to be. That's what we're supposed to be. But we can't be that if we're not casting all our care upon the king. We can't be this because we're so wrapped up in the care that we're not recognizing the, that's the enemy's job is to keep you all focused and wrapped up in the cares of this life and not turning them over according to Psalms 55 and 22 and releasing the weight of the matter. Don't get me wrong. Yes, a thought will flash across your mind. Oh, you know, that bill come and do what you're going to do about that. Yeah, that's going to flash across your mind, you know. But you got to say, oh, child, please, Father God got that. That ain't my problem. Father, you got a bill due. <laughs> okay, King, you got a bill due. 
I didn't cast, I've given that to you. I've turned every bill over to you. I've turned my health over to you. I've turned my children over to you. I've turned it all over to you. I've turned my mortgage over to you. I've turned my rent over to you. I've turned it all over to you. I've turned my car note over to you, King. You have a bill due. What you going to do about it? It ain't my problem. I'm casting it on you. I'm getting the weight of it off of me. Oh, are y'all listening to me this morning? Come on. I'm getting it off of me because, see, he doesn't want you carrying anything. That's why it says in Psalms 55 and 22, the weight of it. See, the enemy knows he wants to weigh you down with things. See, we think the devil, the Bible says he was looking for something. He's ready to pounce on you. He wants to take you out. He's in fierce hunger. So how does he do it many times? He wants you to be just in a state of worry. A state of worry. But when we get out of that win, I go back to the win again. But when we get out of that win and get into the center of trust, no matter what it looks like, King, that ain't my problem. What you gonna do? You told me to trust you. You told me to be in the center of trust. You told me to walk in faith. Come on, look what it says in the ninth verse of 1 Peter, 1 Peter 5. Whom resists steadfast in the faith? How do I do it? I got to be steadfast, unmovable. Look what it says in that ninth verse of the Amplified. Withstand him, be firm in faith. James 5. I believe that's James 5, talks about double-mindedness. You can't be, oh, I'm good, oh, I'm good today. See, that's another thing the enemy uses. He uses that ploy of double-mindedness. So when you're double-minded, you unstable. You day, today, you, oh, I'm firm, I'm believing. And tomorrow, something, another ounce of news, or uh, um, in a moment, another ounce of news comes your way, and the enemy wants to shake you. But you got to stay still firm in your faith. I will not fear what man may bring to me. My heart is fixed trusting in the Lord. That has got to be your stance. I will be firm in my faith. Look what else it says. I'm still reading from the Amplified. You have to be firm in faith against his own set, rooted, established, Strong, immovable, and determined. Look at that. Whew. Thank you, prophets. James one and one and uh, one and eight. That's right. You got to be that way. You have got to be determined. Why? Well, it says knowing the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brothers. Brotherhood, the whole body of Christ throughout the whole world. What is he saying? Everybody going through something? You're not the only one that's going through. You're not the only one that is experiencing a test or a trial. You're not the only one that may be dealing with something. And their issue may be greater than yours. But our job is to stand firm in faith. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. That's what Jesus told us. I will never leave you. He told us all, look, you can count on me. You can count on me. You might not be able to, you can't count on your bank account. You can't count on this person. You can't, you got to count on the king. As much as I love my honey. As much as I love my husband, and as much as I know he has me, we both count on the king. That's the beautiful part. We count on the king. We're not counting on his job. We're counting on the king. Amen? Look what else it says. Everybody is dealing with something. I'm, I'm summing up this and, and this amplified. Everybody's, every believer is going through a moment, some way, somehow. 
Somebody will encounter something some way. Not, it's not always going to be a heavy weight or a heavy burden, but the bottom line, living this life as a believer, there is going to be times that we face a situation. In this life, you will have trouble. Jesus said that, but know that I've overcome the world for you. In this life, in this present life that you live, see, if you keep your objective and your focus on this, then you are here temporarily. And the struggle is people are trying to make this temporary place a permanent home. The, if you, come on, come on, come on. Believers, those that are in Christ Jesus, this is a temporary place for us. Our permanent home is with the king. He told us, I'm going to have a new heaven and a new earth for you. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I just read that in John 14. Chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled because I'm going to go prepare a place for you. And where I am, you're going to be also in my father's house of many mansions. So this is not our permanent home, you guys. This corrupt you think this corrupt place is our home? You think this corrupt world is our home? Not so. A new heaven and a new earth is being prepared. So why are we trying to stay? And why are we trying to be satisfied in a place that's not even our permanent home? Hello. Why? We're on assignment in this earth. Our assignment when we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, when we said to him, now Jesus, not only are you my Savior, I make you my Lord, which means I am yielding to whatever you want me to do. I serve you. You don't serve me. Did you get that, y'all? I hope you did. Because for some reason, all of a sudden, the people of God think that Jesus Christ and think that Father God is there to serve them. And that's wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. We serve him. Come on. We serve him. So since we're serving him, we got to trust him. Amen. Amen. Since we're serving him, we got to depend upon the king. You got that? So while we're here serving him, doing what he will, Jesus put it this way when he's talking to, I believe, the Pharisees. He says, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. What is your meat? What are you chewing on? My meat is to do what he wants. So the body of Christ, y'all need, people need to stop falling out, having all these tantrums and get up and do what the will of the Lord has told you to do. Do what the king told you to do. We're all called to be witnesses. We're all called to reach the lost. We're here in this world, not of it, in it, but not of it. The assignment is to Tell people about Jesus, amen. Let them know that he's the only way. There's no other way. He's the door. He's the door. You can't come through the window, baby. He's the door. No man comes to the Father but by me. I am the door. I am the way. I'm all of that. If you want to get to me, you got to come through the door. You can't come through the window, honey. Y'all got that? It's got to be through the door. So he's that way, and our job as believers, when we accepted Christ as our Savior, and we said, now we, Lord, we make you our Lord, our job now is to go and tell somebody else about the king. Our job is to go and witness to somebody else. Our job, this is what it is. It's like this, it's like this. Have you ever watched the movie The Matrix, okay? Our job is to go to clue that person in that, look, you're in a world that you not really in. You're in a world that's not really your home. You're in a world that you were lost. Jesus came. He died for you and he brought, he has now made you righteous, but you don't know that you got to accept him first. Amen. 
accept him, and when you accept him as your savior, he's going to mark you. He's going to put that mark on you. The Holy Spirit is going to brand you, and it's going to say you're his. You got to accept him first, baby. You, can't, you won't be marked until you accept. Hello, somebody need to put that in there. You won't be marked until you accept. How do I accept him? You got to make the confession. You got to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Come on. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Corinthians, come on. You got to accept and believe. You have to accept and believe. You have to accept and believe. When you accept and believe, then you can be saved. Come on up in here. All right, all right now. When you accept him. When you accept him. See, people don't want to. They, everybody wants to say, yeah, I, I'm saved, I'm saved. Have you accepted him? Come on. Have you accepted Christ Jesus? Have you accepted him as your savior? Have you made him your Lord? Come on. Have you accepted him? See, we can't. Don't play. Somebody said, don't play. Don't play. Don't play. Don't play. Come on. Don't play. Wow. You have to accept him. You got to believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And see, the thing about it is this. People don't want to. They want to go. The, there's, see, you want to take a different route. Mm -mm, you can't take a different route. No. No, you got to go through the way. You got to go through Christ. You got to go through Christ. But I'm going to get back to this teaching. I want to get back to my teaching. I, I know I, I kind of deviated there a minute, but it's important. You got to accept, you got to accept Christ. And we who have, our job is to be witnesses. Our job is to let somebody know, look, you're, where you are right now, this is temporary. This is a temporary home. This is not your permanent home. We got to let people, this is not your permanent home. People are struggling and struggling trying to make things. That, this is not my permanent home. You may love everything you have in your home. You may love your home itself. You may love your vehicle. You may enjoy your vehicles and all that kind of stuff. But baby, let me tell you, I ain't nothing attached to me. Nothing is attached to me. I, I love my children. I love my daughters. I love my husband. But ain't nothing attached to me. Oh, I I. I love this house the king gave us, but it's not attached to me. Why? Because see, you, the Bible tells us we gotta we have to wear this world as a loose garment, you guys. It doesn't say it directly that way. When you look at the scripture, it doesn't say it directly that way. But Paul is saying, uh the author is saying, you gotta you gotta wear it. You can't wear this this world like this. Uh-uh. No, you got to be careful. You got to recognize. Thank you for putting that scripture up for me. We got to be watchful. This is not our home. So when you get mad, when you get frustrated, when you, you got to take a woosah moment and say, hold up here. Why am I letting people stress me out? This ain't my home. Why am I concerned about somebody that is not, this ain't my home. I, my job is to let them know that, look, you have a home. If you accept Christ, there's a new heaven and a new earth for you. This one is going to leave. As a matter of fact, everything is in play for him to come. If your eyes are wide open, everything is in play for you to see that the king can come at any moment. Abba can tell Jesus, go. Go. At any moment. So you got to think about these things. We're in a, a society that, that is twisting things around and, and we just like, oh, kumbaya, my Lord. No. Our job is, come on, people. Jesus is coming. What y'all doing? Come on, people. Do you know him? Have you accepted him? Come on, people. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? No man knows the day nor the hour that the Son of Man shall come, but we do know, he said in the book, I'm going to come. And the Bible
Bible says he can come as a thief in the night. He's going to come. Are you ready? Stop playing with this life. Oh, I heard that one. Stop playing with this life. Stop playing with your life and get serious about this walk with the king. See, that's why he wants you to turn it over. That's why he wants you to know it's going to work out because if you can t stop playing with your life, stop being caught up in collecting stuff. We all like nice things. I like nice things. I'm not a woman that's stuck on, I got to have a name brand this. If I like it, I buy it. I don't care what it is. Whether it be $5, $10, whatever, two, 200. You see what I'm saying? I'm not stuck on things. But if I like it, oh yeah, I want that. I know my husband said, girl, you know you go, you, you tight, you don't want to let spend no money, but that's all right, whatever. But if I like it, I'm going to get it, maybe. <laughs> it all depends on how I really feel about it. Do I like it a lot? Okay, if I like it a lot, you know I'm going to get it. My whole point is you cannot let yourself be stuck on this life so much so that you can forget. Oh, wait a minute, hold up. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. The only thing that we have to take with us out of here, see, this body is going to go back to the dust. It's going back to the dust. Only thing that you got is your spirit and your soul. The soul's going back with the king. Where you, I mean, your spirit's going back to the king. Where your soul going? You determine where that soul is going to go. So that's why the word of the Lord is telling us Turn it over. Cast stuff on the king. Don't let things weigh you down because if they weigh you down, that are going to bog you in your life and you won't be able to be productive for the kingdom. That's the enemy's job to keep you from being productive for the kingdom. The enemy's job is to keep you so caught up in you that you don't have time to tell somebody about Jesus. I would, but you, girl, I've been going through so much, you know, I would. You, you don't want to go to church? Oh, girl, I would, but I've I just been dealing with so much on my mind. I'm trying to clear up some things, you know. I'm really working on clearing up some things. You're going to always be working to clear up some things. Because it's if you want to understand this word, Zechariah 4 and 6. Zechariah 4 and 6 says, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So it's not by your might. It's not by your power. If the king don't work it out for you, if the Lord of hosts don't work that thing out for you, you're going to still be saying the same thing in 2025, 26, and so on. Because the devil's job is to keep you. Remember, he don't like you. I read, I know I just read that. He don't like you. He's your enemy. And if your enemy can get you off focus on trusting the king and get bogged down in the cares of this life, that's all he wants. Then he's going then you'll begin to look for other ways, other ways, other ways, other ways, and you're gonna be like that hamster spinning your just on the wheel, just rolling, rolling, rolling. Ooh, I heard that, King. You're going to be crying the same tears. You're going to be crying the same tears you cried last year. The same tears you cried the year before. And the same tears you cried way back then. You know why? Because some same things are going to keep coming up again and again and again until you let go. Until you release. Until you say, God, I'm not going to let these things weigh me down. Okay, I got I to wrap this up. Got to go back to, I'm back in First Peter chapter 5, verse number, let me go to verse number 10 real quick again. 
uh, verse number 10 says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts all blessings and favor, who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus, with himself, will himself, complete and make you what you ought to be, established and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. See, what does he say? After you've gone through, you've gone, you've gone through some stuff, you've dealt with some stuff, you've turned it over to the king, you let it go. Yeah, you're dealing with it, but he's the king is going to ground you. Oh, I love that. He's going to secure you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to settle you. See, the devil wants to keep us in an uproar. Stop being mad at your people, y'all. Oh, I just caught that. What? 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 Stop being mad at people. Stop being mad at your folks. Stop being mad at your husband. Stop being, stop being mad. See, all this stuff is distracting you. Hello. Stop being mad at stuff. Recognize the distraction. Recognize the distraction. Come on up in here. Recognize the things that are distracting you. Get rid of anger. Get rid of bitterness. Get come, Don't give me that. Get rid of anger. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of frustration. Get rid of the things that the enemy is using to distract you. Recognize them. He don't want you talking to that. No, he don't want you to go talk to that person. No, he doesn't want you to go and talk to that person or this person. He doesn't want you in communion with anybody. He wants you to stay right there in this state of frustration, in the state of I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, that song, I'm tired, and all of that, and not coming out. Because if he can get you staying in your flesh, and some of y'all, come on, he wants you even in self-righteousness. Really? Why? Because that is a state, God, our loving Father, he doesn't want you to be in that state. You know why? Because you begin to think that you're right, and you're wrong as all day long. I'm, no, you're wrong. Own it, change it, let it go. Amen? The enemy's job is to keep you from turning it over. His job is to keep you from knowing that it's all going to work out. Man, come on. Cast that situation onto the king and let it stay there, you guys. Just throw it there and leave it there. Here you go, God. This is what was weighing me down. This is what was making me so heavy. Here it is. If it's a relationship, here it is. This is what's ma what's making me heavy. And when the king says, I'm going to work it out for you, I'm going to fix it for you, it's going to be okay, you got to stop getting... Thank you, king. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. King, when King be telling me to move, I got to move. He said, get your calculator. You got to stop getting, you got to stop getting that calculator and trying to calculate when he going to fix it. You got to stop trying to calculate when the King's going to come through for you. Now, let me see. Now, uh, let me see. Uh -huh. It was back in three years ago, three years ago. Okay. It was back three years ago. This is what we had. We had 24, 23. 22, 20. yeah, it was in 21. It was back in 21. Calculate 21, 21. And it was 365 days. I'm going to calculate that day. And then, and he spoke to me in, oh, 2010, 2010. Okay, now, Father, it's been these many days, and you ain't did nothing. Mm, what you say? You know why? You keep holding on to it. You know why? You like to be weighed down. Some people like to be weighed down. You know why? Some people like to be weighed down because they like to pe people to think that, oh, girl, oh, child, oh, man, you really going through something. Oh, brother, oh, man, oh, oh brother, you going through it. You don't want to turn it over. 
You don't want to give it. You know why? Because what if he works it out and he works it out in a good way and I want to get out of it? <laughs> Just love me some Jesus. Hello. You don't want to release it. Because what if it's the way he wanted it and not the way I wanted it? I hope y'all listening this morning. Hope you're li listening to me this morning because, see, if you're going to, we got to be real with Abba. Come on. Some of you have been holding on some stuff for, I mean, decades. Decades, y'all? Really? Prophetess, it was a deep wound. It was a deep scar. And it's like this. When, when, just when I think I have, you may see somebody that reminds you of that hurt or that pain. But you got to say to yourself, and you got to recognize for yourself, that wants to be a weight, and I've already given it to the king. I've already cast that to him. And I refuse to let this become a weight that I've already given to the king. And when you release that thing, and you know you have released it, ooh, joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can be free, 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 free. Free. Walk in your freedom, you guys. I was sitting here. I didn't know what I was going to talk about today. And I was sitting at my desk and I said, okay, King, what is it you want me to say? And I heard him so turn it over. It's all going to work out. Turn it over. It's all going to work out. When you turn it over, amen, it's going to work out. It, it just is. Put down, your, put down your calculator. Put your calculator down. Put it down. Put that calculator down. Stop. Take him off your clock. And say... I trust you. I'm walking in faith. I have strong faith. Firm faith, says Peter. Firm faith. My faith is firm. Here you are. And that's where I'm leaving you. Here. Yeah. Some somebody say, I got a fine, I have a financial need. I've got this, I've got that, I got the other. Here you are, Jesus. You know I need money. You, I mean, you got to talk. You know what is due. I know that you got it. See, that's all you have to do. I know you have it. And for somebody, you might be saying, Lord, I get to, uh, my money. My, my money is this. And I, I want to see more in my bank account. I want to see more in my wallet. I want to see more. Thank God that he's doing it for you. I love what the word of the Lord says. He will sustain you. Some of you may be in a sustaining moment. Come on. Some of you might be in a sustaining moment. Now I got to go to the word of God again. Zechariah, I think it's uh, 8 and 12. Let me go to Zechariah 8 and 12. I want to show you something. He, some of you may be in that sustaining moment. The king is, oh, he's sustaining me. He's keeping me. He's sustaining me. It's going to be okay. I know it's going to be better. I know it's going to get better. Amen. You got to just have that mindset and keep walking that thing out. Look what Zechariah, Zechariah 8 and 12 says. I, this is one of my scriptures I like as well. It says, for the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all things. Amen? So, no matter what, Father, I'm going to get a blessing. 
You're going to cause me to be to possess the possession that you have for me. I'm going to reap the benefits. I'm going to reap the benefits. I, I'm a tide pair. I'm a seesaw. I'm going to reap. I, I'm not looking at my bank account. I'm not looking at the bills. I'm, not look, I'm looking at that you are my sustainer. I'm turning it over to you because you've already worked it out. I'm just walking out the fact that you are my sustainer. I never lose because you are my sustainer. You said, Jesus, I will be with you always. I got your word on that. You're always with me. You're always with me. Amen. You're always there. I will never, ever lose because you're always with me. Ooh, we. Prophet, some days I feel like I'm just sinking. I'm just sinking. I'm sinking. When you go through the fire, when you go through the flood, it's not going to consume you. It's not going to take you under. My head is, I'm just barely keeping my head above water. You're not going to try. You're not going to try. I thought I would be out of this financial situation by now. The blessings of the Lord make, make it rich and with it as no sorrow. So you got to hold fast to the fact. Mm -mm. All I was able to do was give my 10% and a seed. And that's all I had. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Come on, come on. You are always going to be triumphant. We're always triumphant. Thanks be unto God who always causes me to be victorious. Triumphant, this scripture says, to triumph. I am. So I'm going to lift up my head. The Bible says lift up your head so your gates and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. I love one translation says the invincible one. Him, he, he's got me. He's got me. And I know he's got me. So I refuse to walk in worry. I refuse to walk in fear. I refuse to walk in doubt when I know he's already, already come through for me. Turn it over. It's all going to work out. I love y'all this morning. I pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. I, I, I just love you. I just want to see Abba do his greatest work in your lives. I want to see him just show you his might and his power like only he can do. And he loves to. That's what I love about him. He loves to demonstrate his might and his power. Amen. So, Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you that you have done this for your people. Praise God. I love you. You have done it. You've worked out everything that they're concerned about because they've given, they've turned it over to you. They refuse to let themselves be weighed down according to Psalms 55 and 22. They will not allow themselves to be weighed down because they've casted everything to you. And you care for us, Jesus, because you say, I care for you. So here you have all of our cares. All of our cares because it doesn't matter whether it's small or great. You're concerned about every care. Every care. You said casting all your care. You took every care and you bottled it up and made it just care. Because everything, everything boils down to that care. And so, Father, you care it. I love what you did there, Jesus. You said casting all your care because you care it. You keep on caring for us. You go, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So thank you for meeting every need. Thank you for praise reports that are coming in. Thank you, Father, for every seed that has been sown into the local assemblies of your people, sown into JLP ministries. Father, I decree and declare overflowing blessings this season, this hour. Your people will see overflowing blessings no matter what this year may bring overflowing blessings. I decree it in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it, Father. 
I love you. And we magnify you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. And Father, you go God in our lives. Thank you, Abba. Amen. Hey, you guys, I'm going to be with you Friday. Again, thank you so much for your prayers for Pastor Price and, and his family and myself because God is so good. He's good. And I want to thank you all for praying for our family and the loss of his brother. So we just love you all so much. Thank you for that. We really appreciate it. Hey, don't forget Minister Angela Johnson's book, The Authentic Woman. Oh, you got to get this book now, you guys. If you have not gotten it, do so. Go to the website. Go to JLP Ministries, and you'll be able to find out how to get this book. Beautiful book. You're going to love it. Seed it into somebody else's life. And I'm going to be with you Friday. Yes, I am. This Friday, prayer and prophetic, I'm going to be with you. And I'm looking forward to it. I really am. And not only that, you know what? You can catch up on every broadcast by going to JLP Ministry TV and subscribing, subscribing to our YouTube channel. And there you will find every broadcast that has ever been broadcasted. You'll find Speak the Word. You'll find Prayer and Prophetic. And tell somebody about it and let them subscribe as well. Encourage them because people need to be uplifted in this hour. Amen? They really do. And don't forget to become covenant partners if you have not. Pray about it. Ask the king about it. He'll let you know. Good ground here. You're going to be blessed by it. You really are. And another thing. Have you come? Hey, be my guest at a place of worship. Be my guest at a place of worship. 1045 a.m. every Sunday. A place of worship church. 1704 Northampton Road. Suite 208 in DeSoto, Texas. You're going to be glad you did. I'm telling you. You really will be blessed. And I love you guys. I want to send you some hugs and some love this morning. Be encouraged. Have a blessed day. Don't let anything interrupt your day today, okay? Don't let people, don't let things keep your mind on the king. And if something tries to come and distract you, just say, oh, I turned that over already. It's already worked out. I've already released it. It's going to be okay. And I love you guys and praise God for you. And I will be with you on Friday. Dr. Layton, God bless you, man of God. You and Dr. Barbara, I love you guys so much. Thank y'all for tuning in. Again, sending you some hugs. Be encouraged. Bye-bye.